was at the UNAC convention in Detroit when Bishop was Mission Day and Carlos Moody Jr., the Honorable Choir sang it that day, and he presented that song for the mission department of the Church of God in Christ. And it's such a classic song because all of us need to say that to the Lord that we are available to you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God for this opportunity for being here. And I thank God for my pastor for giving this opportunity. Amen. Got to put up, you know, I always put down that I'm a, that I'm a scheduled speaker today, but subject to be changed. <laughs> but thank God I was not subject to be changed today. But I thank God for being here. Daniel the third chapter. Kind of a little tired, but I think the Lord is going to give us an energy. I was walking with my candidate for all of me yesterday through the whole neighborhood, basically between 51st and 55th to Marshfield to, I think I finally quit it by the time we got to 53rd and Winchester. <laughs> I was so I haven't done that much walking in a long time. I'm surprised Harmony and I actually made it up just for it. But um, I pray that the Lord give me the energy. It's good exercise. But God is able, amen? Yeah. He is able to see us. I thank God for another youth day. We got some young people here today, amen? Yeah. Thank God for the young people. Yeah. Amen. I, was, I, mean, I see young people work last night, young people cursing people out and having no respect. And it's just good to see young people in church, amen? Yeah. You know, I saw a young man on his way to court, 18 years old, trying to get custody of his child, and I'm like to myself, you're still a child. <laughs> Amen. Trying to get, I asked him, I wish that I wanted to ask him so bad, because I was on duty, I said, what would make you think you're going to be a better, why should they give you custody? You in a term in school. Amen. You trying to get, what makes you, well see, this is a society we live in. You know, but I thank God to see the young people in church. And I invited him to church today. I was hoping he would have made it here. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm reading from the Good News translation. Amen. We can get some translation to what some of these measurements for us. I decided to go with the Good News. King Nebuchadnezzar had a gold statue made 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. And he set it in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then the king gave orders for all his officials to come together, the princes, governors, lieutenants, governors, commissioners, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other officials of the provinces. They were to attend the dedication of the statue which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When all these officials gathered to the, for the dedication and stood in front of the statue, a herald announced in a loud voice, People of all nations, races, and languages, you will hear the sound of the trumpets, followed by the playing of the obies, lyres, zithers, and harps, and then all the other instruments will join in. As soon as the music starts, you are to bow down and worship the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not bow down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. And so, as soon as they heard the sound of the instruments, the people of all the nations, races, and languages bowed down and worshipped the gold statue which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It was then that some Babylonians took the opportunity to denounce the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May your majesty, majesty live forever. Your majesty has issued an order that as soon as the music starts, Everyone is to bow down and worship the gold statue, and that everyone who does not bow down and worship it is to be thrown into a blazing furnace. There are some Jews which you put in charge of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are disobeying your majesty's orders. They do, they do not worship your God or bow down to the statue you set up. At that, the king flew into a rage and ordered the three men to be brought before him. He said to them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is it true that you refuse to worship my God and to bow down to the gold statue I have set up? 
Now then, as soon as you hear the sound of the trumpets, oh, he literally sees his heart and all the other instruments. Bow down and worship the statue. If you do not, you will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Do you think there is a God who can save you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, Your majesty, we would not try to defend ourselves. If the God whom we serve is able to save us from this blazing furnace and from your power, then he will. But if he doesn't, your majesty may be sure that we will not worship your God. We will not bow down to the gold statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar lost his temper, and his face turned red with anger at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded the strongest men in his army to tie the three men up and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up, fully dressed, shirts, robes, caps, and all, and threw them into the blazing furnace. Now, because the king had given strict orders for the furnace to be made extremely hot, the flames burned up the guards and took the men to the furnace. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, still tied up, fell into the heat of the blazing fire. Suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement. He asked his officials, Did we tie up three men and throw them into the blazing furnace? They answered, Yes, we did, Your Majesty. But then, why do I see four men walking around in the fire? He asked, They're not tied up, and they show no signs of being hurt. And the fourth looks like an angel. Amen. Look, and then the name of this message says, Are you willing to serve God? No matter what. Look at your neighbor's neighbor. Yeah. Are you willing to serve God? Are you willing to serve God? No matter what. No matter what. Amen. The three Hebrew boys. They was put in charge in the day. They, they put in charge of the areas of Babylon. You know Babylon. And whether or not the king Nebuchadnezzar realized he was being used by God to bring punishment to Israel for they continuously um, backsliding and going into worshiping idol gods. Now, a lot of times when people get political favor and get political positions, they're supposed to be, they usually expect to be obedient or rubber stamps to the person who put them in charge. So I guess they, I guess King Shemez of the Red Face says, I decided to get a little position power, they're supposed to do whatever I tell them to do. Amen. How often do we see that happen that people turn on the community because Somebody gives them a position. Amen. This is political season. We see it happening all the time. I don't make any names, but often people get a position, all of a sudden, their tone changes. Amen. I was, um, even my uh, state representative, uh, I know she used to be against gay marriage. And then her district changed. And she began to get lower, uh, the near loop, the lower south loop area. You know, you got some liberal, you know what? Other people, amen. And they will send her letters. And I'll, I'll put her Facebook page. I will see some of the messages they were seeing, saying, "Please support this." And so when you, so sometimes your position, they expect your position to change because different people are in charge. You know, the voters are in charge of your job. And suddenly, her position changed. And, 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 and this is part of the stand against them when they stand in. Told me, you know what? I've never received one letter saying they're going against me. They say, well, I shouldn't vote for this. But the devil got his people writing letters. <laughs> so, so, so I guess it was suspected that because they was in charge of the province, they were supposed to do what the person who put them in charge was supposed to do. So the order came out for them to set up this guy. I'm, I'm assuming it was an image of Baal. I don't know who it was. I'm assuming it was a Baal. That you are to worship this God at the sound of the music. Amen. You know, we are in church, you know, so the music plays. We worship our God. Well, I guess the devil wants you to worship his God too. <laughs> and they even worship him. He was the God of the other nation. So I guess you want him when the, when the music starts playing, y'all, do this golden image. Amen. It means he tries to do everything that we, that we do. He tries to copy us. If he see us praising our God, he wants us to praise him through the different gods or different images that he has. Amen. We got some images today that 
we, 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 will, we will not find golden images and golden uh, statues and stuff like that, but we got people today still bowing down and worshiping images. It may not be the images of what they see on the streets. It may be the image of the drug dealer. It might be the image of the ladies in the club. It might be the, the image of the hip hop artists. I mean, it may be the image of the gangsters and the gangbangers. These are the images that many of our young people today are bowing down and worshiping. It may be the image of trying to keep up with the latest styles. I mean, a young lady was, I was talking to a young lady the other day on the bus and she's in a church school. When you go to the church school, you know usually you don't mess up some ways in most cases. Amen. So I said, what happened at your old school? She said, well, we were fighting. I was always fighting all the time. I said, why were you fighting? Well, they were jealous of me. Okay, so, so I asked, why were they jealous of you? What was, what was so up about you that made them jealous? Well, I had the latest clothes. I had my, I had Jordans. I said, you're not even old enough to even see Michael Jordan play. How much did your Jordans cost? $125? I said, they are going them to this image of Michael Jordan. He is, he is their God in the image of trying to keep up. So now they pay $125 for a shoe with somebody's name on it. Nothing to do with the design of it. Being made for cheap somewhere in China. But the image is, I got to keep up with this image. So the girls were jealous. So she said, they were fighting me because I had my Jordans on. But you don't even know Michael Jordan. And as it gets me, we got people buying Jordans and killing Jordan Robert for Jordans. This man is a billionaire. All for people who have got nothing else better to do than to pay $125 for shoes, but you can go pay more than $50 and just as good. Amen. So she was fighting because she wanted to keep up with the image. I'm not trying to say that you vice about it, but there's a people who want to keep up with the latest fashions, the latest clothes, the latest styles. And she had the tongue ring, so I asked her about the tongue ring. Oh, y'all said, there y'all go, Keith. I said, why do you have a tongue ring? I said, I asked her, if you never saw a person with a tongue ring in their tongue, would you have gotten that tongue ring? And she admitted, no. Because she was trying to keep up with the image that the young people had. You see one person, I'm going to do it. And I asked people, if you didn't see somebody with, the, with that in you, if you, if brothers didn't, if you didn't see another man walking around with his pants hanging up, would you walk around with your pants hanging down? But these are the images. The young people are happy to this. You Sunday, amen? amen? These are the images. And if you see such an attitude, if you, if you, and the kids, I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, because maybe somebody wasn't here the last time. But when you constantly feeding kids from the time they are born, all kind of music. And I thank God that Harmony cannot stand that kind of music. Amen. But you get it constantly hearing the B's and the L's and all that kind of stuff. And the kids are growing up and listening to it. And they are learning disrespect. I would dare use profanity in front of my dog when I was a kid. Purposely. Amen. I would never dare curse out a bus driver. It's almost routine. Ask if somebody for they put in two dollars to keep walking. You ask for a quarter, they curse you out. It's just a quarter. <laughs> I mean, this is that, but look, but look what they're being. They are being raised by music of disrespect. If you being constantly being referring to you as you know what as the H word, what we begin to think? I must be, you know. So this is the mentality that we're growing up today. Amen. And we got images. These are images. Now we got images of, amen, empire and a scam. I ain't going to go there right now. Amen. Maybe some of you might have to do some repentance today now that empire is over. But Lee Downing has an agenda. And he wants you to accept that homosexuality is okay. This is trying to get you to accept. You saw that in the movie Precious. We made the heroes. But these are the images that we have today. But but we cannot bow down.
to the image. We cannot worship the images that Satan has set up for us to worship on today. Amen. So, 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 so we, uh, we look at what's going on in Iraq, Syria, Nigeria. Christians are just like those three Hebrew boys now. They were, they are being told to denounce Christ or lose your head. Denounce Christ or be burned. Denounce Christ or be beat or put in jail. Amen. And some of them have denounced Christ and turned to Islam because of the fear of what was going to happen to them if they continue to worship Christ. Amen. And those three men made it known to that if God chose for them to be burned, so be it. They didn't even ask God to deliver them. You know what It's not recorded. They asked God to deliver. They made up their mind that, that yeah, He is able to deliver us. And if He wants to, He will. But if He does not deliver me, us, I'm going to tell you what, Nelly. We still ain't going to bow down and serve that God of you. We are willing to be. That was perfectly willing within their mind. Unless we hear when the Lord comes back. 
And you don't want him talking to you. You don't have to do anything. He starts talking to you. You start listening to him. But why do you want to cut your connection from God? I mean, this is it's such a special connection to have to talk with God that when God stopped speaking to Saul, King Saul, he went and tried to get a a a a, 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 a witch to bring back up the prophet from the dead to, to try to get back in contact with God. And that was the last thing he ever got a chance to do. Because he got the surprise of his life. So did the witch. <laughs> but you don't want to lose your connection. Because thank God that Jesus Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father and making intercession for us. But we reject that same Christ who is sitting on making intercession for us. We have no contact, connection for God. How dare we get mad at God and say, Lord, I ain't speaking to you no more. That's a lot of nerve. I don't care whatever happens to me. Y'all probably ain't going through my own situation, amen. But I don't want to get to the point that, but Lord, you didn't hear me in this situation. I'm going through that. I ain't speaking to you. No, because I know what God has done for me in the past, amen. I know who he's able to do, but yet, no matter what, I'm going to deserve I mean, how many people I've talked to, and I've heard people, and I've read where people have said that they have struggled with same gender attraction. And they say they asked the Lord to save them and to take it away from them. But then they say, but yet, they still seem to struggle with it. Or they may take the attraction from them, but they don't get the attraction for the right thing. So they come to the conclusion within their own minds, this must be what God wants me to be. That's a lie from the devil. You see, I've said this before. I believe that Satan has an, he has the ability to attack even the genetics in because of the fall of man. And he, has, he may even attack the genetics even before birth. But God is able to give you deliverance. You have to be born again. You're all born within sin. But God is able, you have to realize that this is sin. Even if God does not take the desire away from me or put the right desire with me, I'm going to know that if I follow after that desire, it is because of my sinful nature, therefore I am not going to act upon the sinful nature that is within me. You can't just not accept this is going to be me because it's happening, but you have to die something I think is written is wants to see, are you willing to serve me no matter what? And I believe once you begin to take the attitude that no matter what, I'm not going to bow down to the image that the devil has before. I'm not going to bow down to the sin, to the sins. And I, I believe that is when God is going to start delivering. But the question is, are you willing to serve him no matter what? Even if the prayer of the answer of your prayer don't come when you want it or the way you want it, are you willing to serve God and obey him no matter what. Even if you don't have an addiction, you're on drugs, and you come to the church, and you may even fall down. And sometimes people will fall down and say, forget it. I'm, I'm a backslid, I'm a fell down, I'm back to the same thing I did. I give up. I, I guess it's going to be, I was meant to be a drug addict. I guess it was meant for me to be a drunk. Because I'm a fail. I ain't know one person that backslid because he let a curse word slip out. So he figured he failed being saved, so he went back into the world. Because a curse word, or he slipped and cursed or whatever. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to get to the point because you failed God. He wants you to believe that you cannot live right because you messed up. You see, I don't care no matter if I fall a hundred times. Holiness is still right. Even if I'm wrong. Even if I, if I leave this pulpit, now I go to the club tonight, or if I go and smoke me a blunt, or get drunk, whatever, go up there on Exchange or 47th Street, you know where I'm going to go on 76th and Austin. <laughs> but if no matter what I may, might possibly do, holiness is still right. And see, that's what the devil wants you to believe, that holiness ain't right. But no matter what happens to you, holiness is still right. And, and so even if you find yourself having failed God, 
You just have to repent and say, Lord, forgive me. Know that he died on the cross for our sins. He died for our sins. He paid the punishment for you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I repent. I forgive me. And he's just and faithful to do what? To forgive you for your sins and to cleanse you from what? That means how much? Amen. So how I many people thank God for his mercy? Hallelujah. Thank God for your mercy. Because all of us at some point in time, we have failed God. But our job is not to accept our fallings, but to realize that we were the ones wrong. And we have to say, Lord, we were the wrong, not you. Sometimes we have to be like JLK. But with God, we have to ask not, oh, we, not, we don't have to always ask God what he can do for us. But sometimes we have to say, we have to ask God, what can we do for you? Amen? Yeah. I mean, how many people be so busy asking the Lord to bless us, do this for us? How many of us are asking God, what can we do for them? Often we are saying, God bless you to me. And I look at them and say, yeah, you bless God. It's easy to say we want God to bless us, but we need to bless God. <laughs> Amen. Are you willing to serve God? <laughs> No matter what, no matter what you're going through, have you made up your mind that even if I don't get the deliverance that I expect or the deliverance that I want, one way or the other, God's going to deliver you one way or the other, are you willing to serve God? Even if you're broke, amen, you didn't get the bills paid, if you get it put out your house, are you willing, and you have the opportunity to go to sin and make some money, amen, are you still willing to serve God? No matter what. Amen. God bless you.